Hello and welcome to today's video. And this is the second video of a short series about using threads. And today I will teach you how to start and stop a background thread in Android Studio, of course, the easy way. By this time, you should already have seen part one. And part one was about blocking the user interface. And uh, we've built a simple app that showed you what happens when you're trying to run a long running task in the main uh, user interface in the main thread or UI thread. And uh, now in this video, I'll take this application developed in the first video and fix it in such a way as the task is going to be run in the background in a separate thread or secondary thread. And we'll do this implementing Runnable. So let's see how the application looks like. And you have just a simple user interface with three buttons and a text view. Every time you click on this button, there will be a counter that will increase. And then you have two buttons for starting and stopping the task. I think the best way is uh, for you to see this running, this in action. And for this, we'll move to Android Studio and you'll see the application running. So this time we start Android Studio by having a project already loaded. And this is a project that I have built in a previous video. And if you want to see what we have here, uh, just check the previous video and it will be explained in detail. For now, I'll just have a quick recap. So seeing the running app, you have the user interface with three buttons, one, two, and three. When you press here, the first button, click to test user interface, you will have a little counter being incremented just to show that the interface is responding, so it's not blocked. You have this text view that will show the status of a thread, if it's start or stopped or whatever the status will be. Uh, but this is not implemented yet. It will be implemented in the next video. And we have this start and stop thread buttons that will start obviously and stop a thread. And this is what we will implement in this video for now. When we press the start thread button, we actually run the code in the main thread in the user interface thread. And uh, our code, our simulated task is just counting to uh, nine. And uh, for every second, every step, we're freezing or slipping the main thread for one second. So we're trying to simulate some processor intensive task, something that takes a lot of time. So I'll repeat it when the counting is in progress. So every time we are slipping the main thread, if you try to interact with the user interface, you can't. So this is just to demonstrate why this is a bad idea to try and implement a long running task inside of the main thread. If you insist and you're pressing the buttons and you're trying really, really hard to interact with the app, most likely you will get an application not responding error and it will crash. So here you are. Okay, so this should be enough to demonstrate the point. So this is the user interface here. So not much, just the buttons and text view. And this is the code. You have some variables. It's only one activity. You have the onCreate method with not much happening. And then you have this test user interface button. This increments the count, just a simple variable. And then we display on the button. So we change the text on the button with the button being just like any other view, just like a text view. You can use the set text method and you can change its text content, whatever is displayed in the button. Then you have the start thread method. And again, I repeat, this is executed on the main thread for now. This is why the user interface is blocked. We will move it. And then you have the stop thread method, and this is not implemented yet. What we will do, we'll start by creating a new class. So we go here before the end of the main activity, and then we'll just say class, and we'll give it a name, let's say background task. And this will, this will implement runnable. Of course, you get this red underlining. So if you click on it to see what the problem is, I will just increase the size a bit. It will make it easier for you to see. So if you go over here, you hover a bit, and then you go to see what the error is, it says implement methods. Okay, so let's implement. We have to select the run. So we have to implement a run method. It is generated automatically. So the error goes away. 
and inside this run method, this is where we will execute our task the, or simulated task, the long running task. And for this, we go here where we have the start thread method for the button. And we take the entire for structure over here. So our task, we just move it inside the run method. What we want to do, because uh, this will only work for 10 seconds, let's say we want to change the duration because we want to have a longer or a shorter task. And for this, we'll just say an integer and we'll say seconds because we want to change how many seconds we pass and how many seconds this will be executed. Then we need obviously to right click, go to generate, and then we'll just generate a constructor. And this is already indicated here, the seconds. And the constructor is generated automatically, so we don't have to worry about this. The only thing that we need to do is go inside here, inside the four, and indicate the seconds that will be received as parameter. Okay, so this takes care of the background task. This is what will be executed. And we can send exactly how many seconds we want this to execute, obviously. Okay, now we have to go back to the start thread method. And here we have to implement the necessary code that will allow us to start the thread. So let's start by saying something like this. We'll just say the BK task. We have it here already. And we'll give it a name, we'll say runnable. This will be equal to a new background task. And of course, we have to give it the number of seconds. Let's keep again 10 seconds just to have it the same as before. You can regard this runnable as a capsule if you want a metaphor to compare it. So the code that is contained here, this one will be encapsulated and this runnable will pass it to the task, to the thread, I'm sorry, that we will just create now to be executed. So we'll just say new thread and this will pass runnable. This is going to be just start. So this is how we start the thread and our new thread will execute the code encapsulated by the runnable. Only problem is that we have to stop it. Let's say we want to press the stop button and we need to make sure this will stop. The way to do it, so we'll just use a traffic light system, a Boolean variable, and let's call it stop task. So this stop task will become true. It's like ordering the program, stop the task. So stopping the task will become true but we have to declare this variable as well. And for this, we'll say this variable will be visible across our project. So in different methods, and uh, it always contain the most update versions. So whenever we change its value, it's straight going to be visible in other places as well in our project. So this means that if we change it here, stop, Okay, so this is the typo. So when we press the stop button over here, the variable, the stop task becomes true and it's visible in the other places. And we have to check it inside here, our for loop. And this is going to say something like, if stop task, then what we want to do, we just want to return. The last thing that we will implement right now, and I'll explain why, is changing this stop task over here in the start thread to stop, to false. So stop task will become false. So with this being said, I think we can just go ahead and try it to see how it works. Okay, so we have the app running. I'll just leave it zoom in like so. When we press again, button to test the user interface, we can count. When we press start thread, we can count further. So this means the user interface is not blocked. So let's see what happens in the background. In the background, our uh, task is being executed. So when I say start thread, 
you can see here in the background, the task is executed, but our user interface is still active. If you press stop thread, well, it just stops. It doesn't say anything, but it doesn't execute anymore. When you start the thread again, starts from zero, new thread. When you press stop, this will stop. Okay, now if you want to have a bit more control over what happens, or if you want to have it clearer for you to see, you can always go here and add some tags. So let's see. Okay, going here, you can go before the return and you can just say log. And then you say opening task or thread. And then we'll see what happens when we press the button. And you can insert as many as you need around the program and you can monitor how uh, the application executes. Okay, let's have a look once again. And then I think we can just wrap this video. And in the next one, I'll show you how to change the user interface from inside the second thread. Okay, with the application loaded, I just start the thread. And when I say stop, okay, you can see that the thread has been stopped. So we were just here in this part of the code. I hope you've learned something new today. If you have questions, suggestions, anything to share with myself or with the community, please leave a comment below this video. If everything is nice and clear, then keep practicing, keep learning, and see you in the next video where I will teach you how to change the user interface from inside the secondary thread. So take care.